Hi guys, happy Thursday, happy Friday Eve. So it is Thursday, which means that my neighbors are having their yard work done. <laughs> it never fails. It is like clockwork, 11 o'clock on the dot, the guy shows up and starts making all kinds of racket <laughs> outside. So um, I'm gonna need to tell him that we're, we're busy over here. He needs to go with his noise. <laughs> Start in the backyard, right? How is everyone? How's everyone's week been so far? Mine's been pretty good. It's been really productive and I am, I'm starting to kind of wear down a little bit. I'm starting to get that ache in the back of my neck and my shoulders and you know, that's, that's kind of how I know that I have been working hard when my body starts to be like, okay, you've been sitting in that desk chair for way too long. You need to get up and do something else. Good morning. Good morning, Trisha. Good morning, Katie, Julie. Hi, Petrina, Emma. So good to see everybody. So what have you guys been up to? What's the weather like where you are? It is surprisingly sunny today, but I think they are calling for rain later, which is never good when you're feeling run down because then all you want to do is take a nap and it's what, 11 a.m. and I'm already feeling it. I'm like, hmm, what time can I schedule that nap for? <laughs> oh, goodness. Good morning. I missed you guys on Monday too, but I, I enjoyed, I gotta tell you, I enjoyed having a little break for just a minute, you know, taking that Monday and just kind of relaxing and we, we grilled out, we had burgers and hot dogs and, you know, it was, it was nice. I definitely missed the, the big celebrations with the family, but I, um, you know, we still managed to enjoy it and I had a good day, so it was good, it was good. But I, I gotta tell you, I'm ready to see the rest of the world, right? I'm ready to be safe and like have a good real barbecue with like the whole family. I miss that, that's like a summertime staple around here is getting everyone together um, and, and really enjoying seeing all the cousins together, you know? All right, guys, so for today's project, we are making some big, large, and in-charge earrings. And you guys know, like, I am all about a fierce pair of earrings. And so we're gonna be utilizing the weekly deals. Did you guys forget about the weekly deals? I know we had the big Memorial Day sale, but there were still weekly deals going on. So no matter where you looked, there was something good to celebrate. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So what are the weekly deals you might be asking if you haven't had a chance to check over on the website? Well, it just so happens that Chain Reaction is the first weekly deal, which is awesome. I cannot tell you how much I love Chain Reaction. I use it for so many different things. We're gonna use it in our project today, but you can get free Chain Reaction with a $25 cart with the coupon code free reaction, no spaces. That is all one word. Good morning, Lisa. Thank you for loving my earrings. I hope you like the ones we're gonna make today because they are big and bold as well. All right, so the second weekly deal is a free boho bead pair with a $35 cart and that coupon code is free boho, which is really stinking cool because some of the boho, be well, not some of them, all of the boho beads are really, really awesome. And I love to think that you could just pop some of those in your cart and like, you're gonna get those for free. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Who doesn't love free things, right? All right, now last but not least is buy two, get one free on strands. And we just so happen to be using a strand today as well. And this one is one of my favorites so much so that I actually have it as a bracelet. Like I just made a stretch bracelet out of it because I love it so much. But yeah, we're gonna use some of these guys. This guy right here, that's one of my favorite beads on this strand like well and it might be one of my favorite beads of all time too actually it's just such a cool cool bead and it has that I don't know it really does have that kind of Tibetan feel to it so that's the strand that we're going to be using you can add that to your cart if you want to buy two get one free on the strands that one is a Tibetan bead strand in mother earth so if you're looking for it um, head on over to the strands and check that out. So we're using Chain Reaction, we're using a bead strand. We're not using any of the boho beads, but that doesn't mean that they're not super, super cool. So if you wanted to, you know, you could definitely take advantage of that as well. But we're gonna make some large and in charge earrings using a little bit of um, the strand as well as some Chain Reaction that I've cut into really small pieces thanks to you guys, because you guys inspire me so much. So um, thanks for helping me design these earrings. <laughs> right? <laughs> we all do it. It's a group effort. All right, let's get down on 
and get it going. Let's get it going this morning. Okay, so let's look let's look at the strand for just a second just so we can kind of ooh and ah at all of the beauty that is here so not only are you getting one of these awesome beads that i love but there is one two three of these on the strand which means you can make a pair of earrings and then you can still incorporate the third one of these beads into a um, necklace or a bracelet that matches your really really cool earrings so that is super cool. There are also these little tiny, I believe that's a three millimeter. I don't wanna to swear to it, but I'm pretty sure because that's not quite a four millimeter bead. These little rondelles that have that pop of red, there's one, two, three of those. I love that. Just that little subtle pop of red that really kind, kind of ties this whole strand together because of that orangey, it's like a burnt orange color that is in the middle there. I don't know. It just really kind of ties the whole strand together because there's a lot of blue and green going on here, but those little pops of red and orange are perfect. So we're going to use those little guys as well. But I got to tell you, even in the earring design that we're making you don't have to use these exact beads from this strand you could use the big rondelle you could use these awesome um, other little blue guys that are very much in that kind of tibetan feel as well so you really could mix any of the beads in the strand into the earring that we're going to make for today also today's earring is large i i know i mentioned that so large that we are going to be using the artistic wire mandrel to create create two teardrop hoops that we're going to hook together yeah it's that big of an earring and so that big of an earring may not be suitable for everybody right that might not quite be your style so if that is the case you're going to be able to take this exact earring and put it on a long strand of chain reaction and you are going to have a really awesome pendant so always keep that in mind if you don't like a big huge earring this is going to make a killer necklace as well so super exciting either way okay all right, and let's talk about the chain reaction. So the chain reaction, I've actually already cut this into some pieces. I've got everything ready to go so we can just get right onto it. But I did wanna show you how it is that I cut up my chain reaction um, just to kind of show you the little pieces that we've got. So they're in the chain reaction strand that I used. It was one of these beautiful rondelle beads, and then there was a section four of these little swirls long, right? So it made like this one, that's one whole section. So I took that section and cut it in half. So we have two little swirly guys, that's one link of chain or one little section of chain, and then the two little swirly guys with the bead, that's gonna be the second little section of our chain, okay? And <clears throat> I cut one, two, three, four, five, and I used the whole strand. I still had some left over, but for the most part, I used up the entire strand of the chain reaction, which you get a lot of chain reactions. So that's, you know, you've got a lot to work with. So I've got five of the longer strands with the bead on the end. And then I had one, two, three, four, five and six so we've got a total of 11 pieces of chain here so that there's definitely a middle i'm just kind of weird like that you can you can kind of do this however you want to but we're gonna we're gonna string these up you'll see what we're gonna do with these guys but that's that's how i have taken apart my chain reaction and i've got it ready to go okay let's kind of flip this guy around a little bit so we don't want to get completely rid of the chain reaction because we are going to use it but you're going to need two pieces of 16 gauge wire i am using um I'm, well i'm using 16 gauge wire of course i just said that but <laughs> you're going to need five inch sections of this and this is what we're going to use to create our hoops with we don't have to work hard in these because this 16 gauge wire is really really strong but if you feel like you need that extra insurance definitely put it on a block and work hard in it after we do that you are going to need one little four inch section of 22 gauge wire because we are going to create one of our knotted head pins now always keep in mind that you need to double all of this to create two earrings i think sometimes we forget about that part right so 
all of the supplies that you need for one earring. You gotta double so that you can make two, unless you're gonna make a pendant, and then, you're then you don't need to. Okay, so to get started, we're actually gonna do that little knotted head pin first, and then we're gonna break apart our strand. Okay, so let's get right into that. So I am going to start here. I'm not even gonna break that strand apart just yet. So we're gonna take our four inch piece of the 22 gauge wire. Good morning, everybody who is coming in. We're creating some big, large and in charge earrings today that could double as a pendant. So we're just now getting started and you haven't missed anything yet. All right, so I'm gonna grab that 22 gauge wire right at the very, very tip and at the tip of the pliers as well. I'm using the round nose pliers. I'm gonna roll that wire around the tip of the pliers once and then twice directly underneath the first roll around. So you're making a little two, two around coil of your 22 gauge wire. You wanna stop right where you see where you have cut the wire, you know, the end of that piece that you started with, okay? Before you take it off of the round nose pliers, give it a bend out this direction. And when you take it off of the pliers, this is what you've got. Okay, notice, let me, let me get something to point with here. <laughs> notice the direction of the wire. So the coil is going this way, this way, and then you've stopped and you've gone back this direction. A lot of people, this is where they get confused because it seems unnatural to take the wire and bend it that direction. You would normally want to take the wire and bend it away from the coils, right? This direction but you don't, you want to go the opposite direction so that you're running underneath the last coil and the first coil, okay? A lot of people get stumped right there. Okay, now we wanna take the tail end of this wire and we want to stick it through the two loops that we made and then we're gonna come in with the nylon jaw pliers and we wanna hold the nylon jaw pliers so that those two loops that we made are sitting right up against there. Don't leave any wiggle room here. You want those loops to be right up against the surface of those pliers. And then you wanna come in with another pair of pliers to grab the tail end of the wire that is going through the, um, the pliers here and pull. And what you are doing is you are creating a nice little knot at the end of your wire and you're kind of work hardening this just a tiny bit, not much, and it really doesn't need it. But you are creating this little cute little rosette shape and that is gonna be your head pin. Okay, and you're just gonna treat this exactly like you would a pre-made head pin. You can do your regular loops with it, just a simple loop or your twisted loops or your wire wrapped loops. And that, that's what we're gonna do. So we are going to come into the strand here and as much as I hate to cut it apart, but that's okay, right? Because I have one that's already in bracelet form that I didn't take apart. <laughs> so uh, I can't, I'm not gonna feel too bad about it. We are gonna take these beads apart so we can get to the meat and potatoes of this and add our beads. So this guy that I love so much, one of the things about this is that it has a really large hole, which can be a really good thing because that means I can also thread this onto leather, which I love. You guys know I love leather and hemp and cord this time of year. The weather's starting to get warm. That's my favorite. So keep that in mind. So you're gonna have one more of these left over and it would look really cool on a leather cord with a knot here and a knot here and nothing else, right? It makes a statement all by itself. But because it has a large hole, we do need to kind of help it to stay on either your regular head pin or your knotted head pin. And so we're gonna bring in one of those really beautiful little red rondelles that I cannot get enough of. That sweet little guy is going to go right on the bottom of our bead. And that's just gonna hold that guy on there, right? And honestly, my knotted head pin is probably big enough that I don't need it, but a regular head pin, a prefab one is, see that one's gonna hold it, is not gonna be. So if you are using a regular, put one of these red beads on the bottom, or you can put one of these little red beads on the top. Either or is gonna look really cool because you've got that extra pop of red, okay? I'm gonna do mine just like this because my knot is big enough to hold that bead on there. Um, but either way, either way, looks really, really good. So we're just gonna create a wrapped loop right here at the top of this bead. So I'm gonna come in with my chain nose pliers, grab that wire and bend it 
right over the top of those the pliers, right? I didn't move the pliers or anything at all, just the wire. Take that away, you've got that little space that's right there, that's the perfect place to come in with your round nose pliers and place it so that the wire is running between the barrel of the pliers. Now we're gonna take that wire and go up and over the top barrel of the pliers. Again, not moving the tool, just holding or just moving that wire, okay, for that step. Now we are gonna move the, the tool. We have to roll those pliers. This motion, that's all there is here. There's nothing fancy. It's just rolling the pliers out of the way so that now we can take this wire on over to the other side. Before, the way the pliers were facing, we couldn't take this wire over here because that barrel of the pliers was in the way. So it's just a simple movement. I think a lot of people get hung up on that one as well. And it's really just moving the pliers out of the way. Okay, now we wanna take this tail end of the wire and we're gonna wrap around that straight section of wire about three times. So that's gonna go between the loop that we made and the top of our bead. And I like to use my chain nose pliers to help with the wrapping, but if you're feeling it with your fingers, go right ahead, right? Totally up to you. All right, so we've got a little bit of a tail left. We're gonna come in with a cutter tool and we are going to snip that off. So we've got this little beautiful, well it's not little, to be honest with you, this is a good size bead. <laughs> but we've got this beautiful bead that is just screaming to be part of a piece of jewelry, right? And we're gonna do, we're gonna deliver. So I'm gonna sit this to the side and I move these guys up here out of the, the danger zone where everything ends up in the floor and we're gonna grab one of our two pieces of the 16 gauge wire. And <clears throat> we are going to come in with the small bell making pliers and we're gonna do loops on either end, just simple, simple loops. We're gonna use the smallest barrel, okay? Grab the wire right at the end and we are just going to turn that backwards P shape on one end. Okay, now we wanna come and do that exact same thing on the other end, okay? And we want these to be going the same direction. Okay, so they're facing each other. You can adjust them if they're not. You um, can always, you know, work on them with your pliers. In fact, you may need to after we do this next step. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use our artistic wire mandrel tool. I have the circular attachment on here, okay? You guys know this tool is one of my top, top five favorites of all time, and I use it for just about everything. And it comes with other attachments. You've got the round one, the square one, the triangle one, and an oval shaped one, and it is so handy. I cannot live without this guy. Deserted Island, I'm taking this guy with me, right? That's totally weird. Okay. <laughs> Coffee's kicking in, can you tell? Okay, so <laughs> we're gonna take that piece of wire and we are gonna find the middle and we're just gonna lay that on the bottom tier of the circle here on our artistic wire mandrel. And then I'm gonna take those two loops and <laughs> just gonna use those as my leverage to kind of push that into a teardrop shape. <laughs> All right, just like that. Okay, so now when I take this off of the tool, I don't like the way those loops are placed. I want those loops to be facing so that, let me just show you. So I'm gonna come in with a pair of pliers. It's easier for me to show you than try to explain this. So I'm gonna grab one of those loops and I wanna just turn it to the back. And maybe yours stayed that way, right? When you made the teardrop shape and you're lucky, you don't have to twist them. But if they don't, you definitely, can just come in, like I said, and just adjust that with your pliers. So now when you're looking at it head on, you don't see the loop. You only see the loop when you are turning it to the side, okay? So I'm gonna do the same thing with the other loop. I'm just going to very gently give it a turn, a little twist with my pliers so that this one is also facing that direction, okay? And just kind of pushing it together a little bit, just to kind of close up that teardrop shape. But that's exactly what we want. Now, because we're using that 16 gauge wire, you don't necessarily have to put this on the block to work hard in it, but if you feel like you need that extra insurance, definitely put this on your block and use your nylon hammer and give this a little bit of um, extra insurance by 
tapping on both sides, okay? We're gonna skip that step. Somebody will probably be mad about that, but I promise it'll be okay. <laughs> I promise. Okay, so we're gonna repeat this exact same process with our second piece. Don't forget, this is five inches of, is it five inches or six? Let me double check that. I say that, but, oh, nope, that is definitely five inches. So five inches of your 16 gauge wire, and I'm using the gold color because it kind of matches all of this brassy goodness that's going on throughout the beads that we're using. All right, so again, same thing. I'm gonna use the small bell making pliers, grab that wire right at the tip, and I'm just gonna roll that end into your little backwards P shape, okay? I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. So I'm grabbing that wire right at the tip and rolling it into shape. Okay, now, you, it never fails, somebody asks, can I use my round nose pliers for this? Yes, you can. However, keep in mind that your round nose pliers are tapered, right? They start small and they get larger. So you want to be sure that if you are going to do this with your round nose pliers, mark them with some with a permanent marker so that your loops are the exact same size on both ends, okay? Because it's gonna make it look funny. It'll make your teardrop shape offset just a little bit and it's enough to drive some of us crazy, okay? <laughs> That's why I always go for the bell making pliers because they are not tapered and it doesn't matter where I place this on the mandrel of the pliers, I'm gonna get the exact, si exact same size loop both times, right? No matter how many times. I make a loop. Okay, so same thing. We're gonna take our mandrel tool, artistic wire mandrel tool, find the middle, just put your thumb down on it, okay? And then use those two little loops as your leverage to come in here and shape that wire into a teardrop shape. Now this time, look at my loops. Now my loops, instead of facing the inside, are kind of facing the outside. So again, want to come in with a pair of pliers. I like to use my bent chain nose pliers for this, just preference. Grab that loop and just very, very gently kind of rock it into the, the place where I want it so that when I'm looking at it head on, I don't see it, okay? <laughs> Tina says, gotta love OCD people. Yes, yes, indeed. All right, same thing with the other loop. Just wanna twist that guy right into the shape or the placement rather that I want. And again, just kind of pinch them together making sure that that teardrop shape is exactly what you want. You can even take this back and put it back on the mandrel, right? And make sure that you still have that good teardrop shape. Now, we have two teardrops. We're actually gonna layer these together, um, which is cool. We've never done this before. And they're gonna fit with each other sort of like this, okay? We're gonna get there. But first, we have got to put our bead on one of these guys. Let's see. I think it's the top one, just looking. No, it's actually the bottom one. Oh, duh, makes sense. Okay, follow me, you guys. Sorry, I had to double check because I've slept since, since I put this together. So what we're gonna do, we are gonna take a six millimeter jump ring and I'm gonna use two pairs of pliers and open that up, I'm twisting laterally, not pulling apart, right? I'm just kind of walking that jump ring open, just like that. And I do wanna add a jump ring to this. I completely forgot that part. So that's all right, because we've got them right here. I was wondering why these four millimeters were in here. I'm gonna take a four millimeter jump ring. This is just adding some length to this, okay? See where this is gonna hang? I want this to come down just a teeny beeny bit. So I'm gonna add a four millimeter jump ring to the top of it. So I'm gonna open a four millimeter jump ring, thread that onto the wrapped loop on the top of my bead, and then close that back. That, is just a tiny, tiny little, little zhuzh, if you will, <laughs> of the length. Now, when I go to open my six millimeter jump ring and thread things on, I'm gonna thread on that four millimeter jump ring instead of the wrapped loop on our bead, okay? So now what I wanna do is I want to attach this six millimeter jump ring to both of the loops on our earring here. Let's see, I'm trying to figure out the, it's really kind of, there, we're going from the inside. All right, so there's one, and you do kind of have to make a, a reach right there, right? So you may have to squeeze your little 
your teardrop shape together. All right, so that's what we've got. We've got that opening of the jump ring up here on the top, okay? And I've thread through the two loops on either side of the teardrop. And now I'm gonna close this back. <laughs> if I can hold on to it, I will close it back. And same thing, I'm just using that walking motion, right? Just kind of twisting those jump rings back. All right, so that would make a really cool earring all by itself, right? But we are extra, so we're gonna take this to the next level. So what we wanna do now is we want to tear this with our other teardrop shape, just like that. And so to do that, we're gonna use a, another little section of jump rings here. We are gonna use two more six millimeter jump rings. So there's gonna be a six millimeter jump ring that goes right here. That's gonna be the go-between jump ring, right? That's our middleman. And he's gonna be facing us, so he's not gonna be facing flat. And then that next jump ring, we want it to be facing us. That's why this guy in the middle is necessary, right? Because otherwise these two jump rings would not face each other. So there's one, I'm gonna go ahead and close that back because we don't need to do anything with it. It's just the, the go-between, okay? Now, our next six millimeter jump ring, this guy has a little bit bigger of a job. We're gonna thread on that six millimeter jump ring that we just added and now the two loops to our teardrop. And to hold everything in place so that I don't dro drop it, I'm gonna bring in my other pair of pliers here. And again, you might have to kinda squeeze to make that reach, there we go. And then attach the jump ring closed. So now we have this really cool double teardrop and that is a cool earring all by itself. That is a cool pendant all by itself, right? I think that that's awesome. I love it. I This was initially what sparked this design to start with, but when I looked at it, I was like, okay, that's great and looks awesome, and a lot of people are gonna just make this, and that's gonna be awesome, right? And then there are gonna be other people that are gonna take this even further, and so I wanna give that to you, the, the option to do that as well. So, the first thing I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and attach the ear wire to the top of this just so that we have something to kind of hold on to and shake everything down a little bit when we start adding our pieces of um, chain reaction to this because it might get a little uh, messy, right? And it, it's nice to have the ear wire so that you can pick everything up and kind of make everything lay where it needs to. All right, hold on, let's see. I thought I saw a question go by, let's see. Oh, Rosanna, she says you could use one of the links for a fancier look. You absolutely could. Yes, yes, yes. You could. You could use one of these guys. These are, I love these guys. So in place of that jump ring that's right there, or rather not necessary, well, yeah, I guess you could. You could use this guy right in between there. I love using these in like the most unexpected ways. You could pop this guy in there. Of course, you would only be looking at him from the side. You, would you notice that that's what it is? But any of your extra little pieces like this, your bead caps and your spacers that have an open hole in them, I like to use those as like the additional little, just a little extra something to the design. But now we're gonna get really extra, okay? <laughs> and this part is gonna add some extra movement to this, and it is also going to add, I'm not gonna lie, this is gonna add a little bit of weight. It's not so much that it's an uncomfortable earring to wear, but just be mindful of that if you like large earrings, but they they do tend to be on the heavier side. This one is one of those where you're, the more chain you add to this, a little bit heavier it's gonna be. And again, I would not show this to you if this was not going to be a, um, a wearable earring because I don't like them to uh, be so uncomfortable that, that, I, that you can't wear it. What's the point, right? All right, so we're gonna use some four millimeter jump rings. We're gonna put four millimeter jump rings on the ends of all of our pieces. Let me scoot this over so you guys can remember what we had here of our chain reaction. So you can see at the end of all of my little links of chain reaction, and yours may be different because there are so many different styles of the chain reaction that are available, but there is gonna be some link or little jump ring available that you can use. I'm gonna thread four millimeter jump rings onto each one of these, okay? So I'm gonna have 11 four millimeter jump rings. 
and we are one at a time going to layer these onto the bottom of our earring and we're going to alternate okay so what we're going to end up with is very much like this all right so we are adding like crazy chain on the bottom of this guy that's probably what these earrings should be called crazy chain earrings because they really are cool and i'm using the top tier of our earring just because if i use that bottom tier it really makes these more shoulder duster kind of earrings and some people don't like that right they don't like it to be super super long this is going to look really cool on i cannot wait to show you what these look like when you wear them um, it does kind of look like a mess when we're just working on it. Anyway, if you don't, if that part doesn't bother you, you know, the length part doesn't bother you, you always can put that on the bottom and get extra, extra length to that. But we're going to stick to the upper teardrop and we're just going to alternate. So we're going to take our little four millimeter jump rings. You can use sixes here if you want to. Just keep in mind the sixes are going to add extra length to everything. And we're just gonna thread on one of our little chain reaction pieces. And before we close that jump ring, we're gonna thread it on to the earring and close it back. And we're gonna do this 10 more times, okay? And I'm alternating the short ones and the long ones. And I've only got 11 of these, but I gotta say there's plenty of room on your teardrop component. You could fill this completely up right that whole lower curved section you could really fill up and make it full and bold and just really extra extra <laughs> we're going extra you could go extra extra right <laughs> all right so just alternating the short strands and the long strands Gonna pop that guy on there. Sometimes you gotta wiggle a little bit because your four millimeter jump rings, remember those are tiny little guys and that 16 millimeter or that 16 gauge rather uh, wire for our teardrops is a, that's a thicker wire. So it does take a little finessing to get that on there. So again, these look crazy when they're just laying out but when you put them on it all the whole look comes together and <clears throat> like i said at the beginning of this you definitely could turn this into a pendant if this kind of earring is not your style and it would look awesome with a another piece of the chain reaction so just taking your matching chain reaction right the same style I didn't get that one open enough, I don't think, um, of the chain reaction, finding the middle of your chain reaction strand and then adding this as a pendant to it and you've still got a really, really cool look. So you can utilize this exact same design just in a necklace instead. All right, so we're getting there, slow and steady. I apologize you guys for my fingers getting in the way <laughs> as I attach those but I figure you guys know what it looks like to uh, attach a jump ring right so so who has plans for the weekend it's supposed to be really sunny and pretty after the rain moves out here and I'm thinking I'm gonna be spending my Saturday afternoon evening in my hammock in the backyard what are you guys going to do always interested to know what everybody else does i mean this is a difficult time so you never know what people are doing all right we've got three more pieces to add and then i will be able to put this on and show it to you guys this is such a cool earring. And again, hot mess. See that? Hot mess. <laughs> Does not look like anything when it is down on your surface, your work surface. 
<clears throat> so just a side note, I um, just ordered a rather large shipment of faux leather pieces so that for those of you who have a Cricut, we can make some jewelry together on our Facebook Lives using our Jesse James beads and our Cricut to cut out some really cool leather or faux leather components. I think that'll be a lot of fun. So if you are interested in that kind of project, let us know, because we have that planned. That is in the works, you guys. All right, so there is all of our chain reaction added to the bottom of this, which once this is on, you're gonna see how stinking cool that looks. I don't, there's something about this, something that reminds me of like a genie, right? I can just picture like, I dream of Jeannie. Like, remember how fabulous her outfit was? Yeah, I could see these earrings being rocked with like some harem pants and like a scarf. Yeah, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. That's it. That's what I'm doing this weekend. I'm going to dress up like a Jeannie. <laughs> okay. I'm going to, I have Jeannie hair today, right? I can totally pull this off. <laughs> I can rock the Jeannie look. I've got my I dream of Jeannie hair. <laughs> I am definitely showing my age, right? You guys know I watched I Dream of Jeannie in reruns. I am not, no. <laughs> okay, so I have to take off these fabulous earrings to put on that fabulous earring. All right. Now, something else, you can kind of adjust this a little bit because you see how the chain is right there in the back? Yes, Vicky, a gypsy. I love gypsy jewelry. Me and my mom both. Um, we've got a friend of ours that always makes fun of us for our gypsy jewels because we always wear like just so many bracelets and big earrings. Um, definitely our little gypsy jewels. Um, but what I was saying is the chain that is on this is to the back of this front teardrop, right? You can kind of flip that around if you want to and have that chain on the front instead. It just makes, you just have to adjust the um, jump rings, open them up and switch places with your teardrops if you want those chain pieces to hang over the front, right? As kind of a waterfall effect. But enough of that. Let's turn, let's try it on. Look, yes, yes, I'm feeling it. Those are so fun. That is a big, bold earring, but I gotta tell you, like once you put it on, it just works, right? Doesn't look necessarily so cool just hanging there. Definitely a hot mess when it's down on the mat, but I don't know. There's something about it that just, I was like really excited when I put these together. I love that the double teardrop and then the addition of the chain reaction makes it wearable, gives it extra, well, not that it's not wearable, but it. It gives it some extra swing and motion without creating a heavy piece that is really just pulling down your ear and is uncomfortable to wear. So there you go. I'm gonna make its mate. This one, I do have a mate, but this one, the teardrops are a little bit different and I forgot that red bead. So I do have to, to switch it out, but you guys can see how fun those are, right? So if this is not your style for earring, turn it into a necklace. This is a fabulous pendant and it could be a short pendant, but I really kind of feel it as a longer pendant, one with like a really long piece of chain reaction. But hey, you do you. Totally up to you guys. All right, that's it. I love it. I think they're fun. I'm going to take some pretty pictures of them so we can post those up for you guys to refer back to if you would like to see them. And of course you can always watch this in replay so that you can watch again. And any of the techniques that you have learned or that I showed today can be implemented in different ways, right? You can use them in so many different ways in your jewelry designs. And that's really the end goal when it comes down to it. All right, don't forget about your weekly deals, guys. The free chain reaction, the free boho bead pair, and the bio to get one free strands. All of that information is over on the Jesse James Speeds website for you to check out with the coupon codes. Those are there, so in case you forget, all that information is right there for you. You guys have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the afternoon. Enjoy your Thursday. Enjoy your Friday if you do not see me. You can, 
if you want to come hang out with me tomorrow at 1 p.m on sarah ellis designs i'll have another fun project for you guys if not you can catch me first thing monday well not first thing monday maker at 7 p.m right here on the jesse james beads facebook page and i will see you guys again soon bye guys